Hello friends, welcome back. This is a full stack development video series. We were building the Smart Certify app, which is an online certification platform application. So this is episode six. And in this video, we'll be deep diving into the basics of the Git and how to push your code to your repository in Azure DevOps. We will create a new repo in Azure DevOps, initialize a local Git repository and use the essential Git commands to commit and push your code to the cloud. Whether you are new to version control or need a refresher, this step-by-step -step guide will help you get started with Git and Azure DevOps. So without delay, come let's get started. So before we dive into um, you know Azure DevOps, first of all, what is Git? Git is a distributed version control system that allows developers to track changes in their code, collaborate with others and manage the project versions. See, so this helps keep a history of the every change that you made to the code, enabling the developers to revert to the previous version when necessary and collaborate effectively with other team members. Azure DevOps is a cloud-based platform from Microsoft that provides the development tools and services for building, testing and deploying the softwares. It includes features like source control, like a Git, build pipeline and project management tools. So this helps the team to manage the complete development lifecycle. That's the wonderful thing that Azure DevOps is going to give you. And in this video, I'll, we will be focusing on how Git integrates with Azure DevOps repositories and allowing you to store and manage your code remotely. So by the end, you'll know how to set up your own repositories in Azure DevOps and use Git to push your code to the cloud. All right, open up the browser and go to dev.azure.com. Just go to dev.azure.com, okay? Okay, so here, all what you have to do is, you know, you have to just get started with it. I'm going to click on sign in. Okay, when you click on sign in, it is going to take you like this. If you already have an account with Microsoft, for example, if you have already have an account with uh, azure.portal.com, all right, if you already have an account with Azure, like portal.azure.com, I suggest you use the same login okay so always use try to use one email id login for all of the azure latest stuff azure devops azure portal keep it simple okay uh, just keep it one single login that you use it and uh, if you do not have if you're first time doing it uh, you know go ahead and create your uh, new account or you know use your existing any of the other gmail id even to create it okay so for example i use learn smart coding at gmail.com to create account in microsoft which is possible so do so once you have done that this is how it looks after you log in okay it will initially ask you as soon as you start like create an organization and uh, enter some project and blah blah stuff so basically this is how it looks so very first time when you go you will not have any of these things, even you will have a, I mean, I'm not able to show you that, but basically you will not have anything like this here. It will just show you a prompt here where you need to create an organization, okay? So what we are going to do is, we are going to mimic what will happen if you're doing it for the first time. So I'm going to hit on this button and this kind of a screen is what it will show for you, okay? You see this? Here it says you need to create a new organization. Okay, for example, dev.azure.com slash a name, an organization name, and that has to be unique. Once you do that, you can choose where you have to host your project and then you can continue. Okay, so you're going to do that and then you will end up like this. So after I created the organization, see, learn smart coding, dev.azure.com slash learn smart coding, which means this is my organization. So this means this is my organization and this is a unique URL, okay? If somebody uses this URL, they will ask you, they, they, you know, it will prompt you to log in and without my credential, you cannot log in unless I give you permission as a user to get into this organization. Okay, we'll talk about that shortly. Now, once you have this organization, the very first thing that you need to do is create a project. Give a project name, give a description and choose private because public is uh, by default, it is disabled and then you can create it once you create it be like this okay so for example um let's say i, I go inside this okay uh, this is the project name okay so i have the project name like this and it will look like this so if you see there are a lot of stuff in this 
uh, azure devops like we initially spoke it is not just the repository you can manage the project end to end it has a lot of stuff like you can go through it like summary like dashboard it can tell you what how the progress are happening you can add some widgets you can have some boards board means like in in company if you're working in it company you might already know what is jira board and you know those kind of things right so all of those print backlog all of the project maintenance stuff and all is here okay we can start the project i mean if you guys are interested um, we will do all of these things in a different live call but there are a lot of stuff you can do here okay we will not focus on this boards but feel free to go through it what we focus is the repositories here you see this repos this is what we are going to focus now before we focus on this repository let's take a look at these things see these are the test plans where uh, you know qa quality analysis like we also call as testers in the company will take care of it for each project and artifacts are something that is kept here so that it can be circulated against uh, any of the employees who have access artifact is basically it's like a uh, in a treasure where uh, you know it's been shared with um, the fellow folks to read about it and you know make it use make use of it those kind of stuff and then pipelines ci cd pipelines if you remember we we spoke about uh, ci cd pipelines for automating our code to get deployed to the cloud and all of those stuff they all come in this pipeline okay so we will go through this pipeline stuff and all later as we progress in the series but let's focus on the repository the moment i click on the repositories you know if there is repositories it's going to come if not uh, some default stuff will be there for example the project name is uh, devops demo right so there's a default repository created where i never pushed any code um that's okay so what we are going to do is you're going to come here repository you're going to come here and click on new repository here we will say i mean like you give a name right so we will say smart certify dot api okay i'm gonna click like this i'm right? gonna give a name meaningful name like this and you can choose what you want here and then like let's say i remove this create okay now it's an empty repository that was created where we can push our code for the first time the multiple options you can clone this in visual studio code you can use any of these things you know now what you need to do is go to google.com go and type git installation or get install for windows or you know mac os whatever you will get to this kind of a link you go to this location and choose which one you want git software is important for us to proceed so i have to uh, click on this because it's a windows 11 i will click on this i will install it and i uh, know no i have the git install already so you please go ahead and do this and once you have the software installations ready what we are going to do is this is the repository right this is the repository so we're going to copy this repository link okay now in the previous video what we did is so in the previous video we built um you know the basic structure of the project right we wanted to save the project so we're going to push this code to the repository so you come to the place where your repository code was there like you know your code source code was there the local code i'm going to come here and then go and type cmd basically it picks up this location and open up uh, in the command prompt here itself okay directly here so now what we do the very first thing the very first step is we have to say git init which is it's an empty folder where git needs to be initialized so when i say git init say it says initialized empty git repository okay now how do i know git is initialized if you come here go to view go to show and hide items here you go see git is hidden that's how it works okay it tracks all the changes and this is how it works this is only for your understanding leave it the way it is and let's focus on our uh, git commands so we have first initialized the git commands now what we do um we okay there are a couple of scenarios right if if uh, you do not have a code and if you want to pull the code from the repository right you know with an existing repository let's say i give i'm going to give you the link in the github.com so let's say um git you need to pull the code right so go to the particular folder where you need to pull the code and then git clone followed by the git url if you do this what will happen is it will initialize the git initialization and it will pull the code from this repository 
but our case is different what is our case we already have the code in the local okay we will we will learn both the things okay we already have the code we are going to put this local code into the git okay very first time now what we do we will use this command git remote add origin followed by the name of the git what it does is after initializing the git it just tells that hey um now this this one is linked to this one the the, the all the copies that you were working is linked to this one okay that's what it says now git fetch origin git fetch origin is in a command that will actually fetch all of the stuff uh, all of the details metadata and all of the details from this location because we have added the remote login like uh, we have already told where to look for so from there it is going to do this now okay so before the next command let's go back to this place and let's go to the branch and see what are the branch that was created by default okay so there is nothing here it's not showing anything okay now let's go here and then say uh, git checkout minus b and say main so basically we are saying we are checking out a new branch called main here so minus b means new branch create a new branch and the branch name is main see it created a branch and it switched to that branch okay if you type like this it means you're switching to a branch which has already exist but in earlier case there was no such branch so we created the branch with the minus b and then we switched to the branch now what we do we will we're done with this okay so the next what we're going to do is we are going to say git space add space dot which means every single files that is inside this api folder needs to be added so when i say it's it's success or you can also say git add space dash dash all both are same dash dash all and dot is same okay so now it's added right uh how do you check what is added so there's another command called git status okay so git status means if it is added it's all shows in the green color because it's ready to push okay now what we do is we use the next command called git commit minus m means it's a message we are saying this is our first commit and it's the message name is initial commits commit okay now it became green color correct now remember this is something that you're doing until you're local this commit has happened until a local okay now what we have to do we have to say git push dash u so git push dash u origin main it's going to push the code that is there see to the repository so let's me bring this down you see this i'm going to refresh this and see what happens great the code is here with the main branch and if you look at this um, commits now if you look at this branch there'll be one branch and you see this commit this is the commit that we pushed in that commit all of these files are there okay so this is how you bring the code to this repository okay let's say i already have a repository i need to bring that code to the local let's go to this repository okay and then click on clone remember i will tell you one more time repository choose a repository at the end the main page you have something on clone copy this now let's go back and pull in the code okay so let me going to step out and i'm gonna just say temp so that i can delete it later so i will open this in command prompt i will enlarge this now git clone repository url it's cloning the code it cloned i'm going to close this and you see this inside the stem whatever we pushed was been retrieved here also same thing here also same thing inside this this was pushed so if you go here and see git will be there see git is here 
okay so that's how it works so you know how to push your local changes to the repository and you also know how to bring it back to your local now there are many things that we will learn but what we do is let's keep this um, interesting okay so what we know about this in the video we know what is git what is um, azure devops how we can create a repository how you can push your code to the repository and i'm going to give you every single command one by one so that you don't miss it and you can re-watch this in case you get stuck all right now as we progress every single time that a uh, new code has been pushed i will also show you how we will create a branch how we will push the code and how we will make a, a pr pr means pull request how this pull request works in azure devops how prs are uh, reviewed by the fellow people in uh, fellow developers or leads in the in the company and how they are getting approved how how all of those concepts right we will show that in the real world okay so that can happen only when i start with the new code when i uh, publish the next video so stay tuned episode 6 is all about basics of git and azure devops stuff i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel share this with your friends and whatever you feel so far with episode 6 do let me know in the comment section if you're more excited and uh, looking for some specific stuff let me know and I will make a good video out of it, right? So 2025 is our year. We will rock in the career with the wonderful technology and high cutting edge tech skills. All right, stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding.